a young child, the most boring thing I can remember ever having to do is sitting in the waiting room at the doctor's office. As we all know, what should only be a 10 minute wait easily turns it into at least an hour. So how do you entertain a young child? My mom's solution, hand her a book. It was a book about a farmer who had woken up with a bucket on his head. I cannot remember the title of this book or what had happened to this poor farmer after he had the misfortune of being stuck in a bucket, but I can remember that this was the first book that I had ever read. This book had begun my love for reading, and now many years later, I find myself reading and rereading almost any book I can get my hands on. Over the next few minutes, I will discuss some of my favorite books that come from the genres of nonfiction, classic literature, and fiction. The first book that I'll discuss with you is called Gang Leader for a Day by Sudhir Venkatesh. In this book, um, Sudhir, who is a rogue psychologist in Chicago, um, goes to do a project for his senior class, and he ends up coming across a gang leader, and the gang leader allows him to follow him around for a few years. So he's able to collect a lot of, um, to a lot of different facts and things about gangs that we wouldn't otherwise know. And I'm a social work major, so it's really cool being able to learn those things about a very private world. Um, and the author, he just, he speaks with such honesty about it. Um, I'm going to read a passage from you because he can talk about the good and the bad things about gangs. And most people don't think that gangs really have necessarily good qualities, but the one that he follows around really does. And Sue Tier says that the gang leader, JT, fancied himself a philanthropist as much as a leader. He spoke proudly of quitting his mainstream sales job in downtown Chicago to turn to the projects and use his drug profits to help others. How did he help? He mandated all that his gang members get a high school diploma and stay off drugs. He gave money to some local youth centers for sports equipment and computers. He willingly loaned out his gang members to Robert Taylor tenant leaders who deployed them on such tasks as escorting the elderly or errands or beating up a domestic abuser. JT could even put a positive spin on the fact that he made money by selling drugs. A drug economy, he told me, was useful for the community since it redistributed the drug addict's money back into the community via the gang's philanthropy. And without passages such as those, we wouldn't really realize that gangs sometimes do have a positive um, contribution to society, even if they don't go out the moralistic way of doing it. Uh, my second book is 1984 by George Orwell. It's a classic. Um, so in this book, um, Winston, he's part of a utopian society who really cannot think for themselves. Um, but he begins to challenge some of the ideas that are put into his head, and he ends up being into a lot of trouble for having his own ideas. But I love this book because it really stresses the importance of individuality, and it also successfully creates um, a utopian society, which is actually a really hard thing to create, um, but George Orwell does it in a way that is just absolutely perfect. It is. Mm -hmm. And my final one comes from my favorite series. It's Harry Potter by J.K. Rowling. Um, and the I other like series, Harry, um, Harry just, he makes so much money for many friends and overcomes so many triumphs. And one of my favorite things about this book is that the characters, both the good and the bad, are very dynamic. Um, they have many sides that you just get to know throughout the series. Um, and you end up finding some um, in between characters that, like Umbridge, who is a good person, essentially, but you just hate her more than you hate someone like Voldemort, who is the ultimate evil. Um, so it's just kind of cool that J.K. Rowling can create characters like that. And it also bridges the generation gap between um, children and adults because it's loved through many different generations. Um, and although reading is... Uh, is often viewed as a solitary activity. It has a way of bringing people together. Adults read to the children, volunteers read to the elderly, clubs are performed, and friendships are made over a sh shared interest in the book. Books pass from person to person, transmitting beloved stories and ideas from generation to generation. Some stories may fade from our memories faster than they came, but I think J.K. Rowling put it best when it's she said, pause. the stories we love, be love best do live in us forever.